So you want to become a doctor and you're probably a high school student who's interested in learning how to develop your interest, how to become competitive and how to make sure this field is for you. Well, then this video is for you and I'm going to tell you all the things you should know if you're young and you're in high school and you want to become a doctor. Let's get into it after this intro. All right guys, what is going on? Lux here from the MD Journey, helping you succeed on your medical journey with less stress. So this video guys is dedicated for all of you youngins who want to become, at, at least at the point where I am, where you are practicing as a medical doctor, but you're far away is removed from it. You wanna know what you should do now to really get to this point. And I'm gonna break it down into several steps. Um, and so make sure you stay till the very end of the video. And if you do enjoy it, make sure you give this video a like and subscribe to the channel for more tips on being a doctor, getting to be a doctor and just everything uh, in between. So let's get into it. So step number one, guys, if you are in high school and you're trying to become a doctor is to get away from this idea of trying to be impressive. I feel like one of the most detrimental qualities for anyone trying to go into medicine is that you are just so kind of like focused on trying to make sure your chest is sticking out the whole time. You want to make sure people know of your academic prowesses, uh, your research prowesses, community service. It's okay with being impressive, but sometimes you need to make sure of not trying to do and work very hard to look impressive. So if you're trying to ask me in the comment section, a lot of you guys do, of how can I look impressive for med school, it's a little too early to ask for that. Um, if you're in high school, but it's also like the wrong idea. You need to ask what to do to kind of be a competitive applicant, but not about just being impressive. That's where your focus should be. So get out of that mindset. It's really about gaining experience and making sure you're doing the right things now. That way when it comes down for college, as well as med school, you have the right habits and the right systems in place. So tip number one is getting out of this mode of being impressive. And tip number two, guys, is really the only thing, um, aside from maybe the next one, that you should really focus on, is to perfect your study system to focus on long-term retention. In high school right now, you can probably get away with cramming the night before and still ace your exams. Your classmates may not be able to do it, but you probably can. Uh, and in college, you may be able to do the same. In med school, not a chance. Maybe once or twice, but eventually it's gonna get to you. There's just way too much information. So the best way for you to help your future self out and to make it more likely that you can become uh, a doctor is to make sure you now perfect your study system. It's not to study excessive amount of hours, that's not the idea. It's to study as efficiently now to have long-term retention in the material you're learning. So if you're in biology, make sure you are asking yourself, how am I studying? What's working? What's not? How can I make adjustments? And I'll link down below to my studying playlist so you guys can check out and you can use those same tips that I give to med students and you can use them in high school as well as college. So make sure you tinker with your studying because you should be focused on long-term retention. That's what being a doctor is about, right? So you want to remember what medications they give your patients, you want to remember important diagnosis. That's not something you just cram for. So focus on long-term retention and create systems to help yourself study better. Now, the third thing you need to do is obviously get experience, get some exposure. I know a lot of you guys are interested. How do I, how do I get shadowing? How do I get people to let me follow them? And I'll admit, I'll be one of the first to admit, shadowing is tough. And you know, I've made a whole video about shadowing, so I'll link it down below. I don't wanna make this video longer than it has to be, but let's talk about some unique ways you can get some exposure. So shadowing is definitely one of them, but sometimes it's a numbers game. You have to contact a lot of people, um, or at least know somebody in the field to get um, some shadow opportunities. But other things you can do are finding some unique experiences around you that can get you the same kind of exposure. For example, there are a lot of free healthcare clinics in prominent cities. Um, where you provide free healthcare and the doctors come on their own time and volunteer. And you may be able to volunteer yourself as well. You may be able to work in the reception. You may be able to help with things such as checking vitals and blood pressure. And through all that, you can understand, do you like in this environment? Can you see yourself working as a doctor? Is this something you know that is cool to you? Um, so clinics are a great one. Health fairs are also another one where sometimes people are providing free healthcare like blood draws. You can help the phlebotomist, you can introduce yourself to the doctors 
that are there and ask them if you could shadow them. A really interesting way to get some healthcare experience is through summer camp. So if you're young and you're in high school, maybe you're graduating college and you have some summers off, try to see if there are some summer camps nearby that are particularly designed towards like a certain medical diagnosis or group. Like there are summer camps on kids with diabetes, kids with like cancer diagnosis, you name it. And you can work as a counselor or a staff member and really get to interact with these patients. Maybe you don't directly get to work in a medical context, but you get to work with patients who have a very significant medical disease and then understand, you know, is this a population I would want to serve one day in the future? Um, I've had a lot of people who have mentored um, who have taken kind of advantage of these summer camps. So they're a great kind of underappreciated way of getting a lot of exposure in a very short amount of time. And then finally, guys, you know, a great way to get some exposure without even having to be anywhere is just checking out videos on certain fields um, that you may want to pursue. For example, you may want to be an orthopedic surgeon. There's some great videos of people making days in the life of an orthopedic surgeon. And I'll link some down below from some prominent YouTubers uh, and doctors who have basically documented their life. So if you watch it, you can ask yourself, is this interesting? And two, could I see myself doing it? The second one is more important. Um, but those are great kind of unique ways to get some experience without the traditional shadowing. You still try the shadowing, but they're trickier when especially if you're in high school. So those are some other things you can do to develop your interests. And to continue on guys, uh, another thing you should really understand is it's important to explore and consider other fields. Being a doctor is not by any means the best field in medicine. And more importantly, it's not the best field in medicine for you. You may want to check out other fields such as being a nurse, which, uh, a lot of amazing people do. They're brilliant, they're smart, and they're amazing at what they do, and I could not do my job without them. Things like being a physical therapist, occupational therapist, um, you know, you name it, speech, social work, uh, respiratory therapy, uh, being a physician assistant. There are so many fields in the healthcare industry that you should definitely take some time and just give some attention to. Because while it sounds nice and your family may be pressuring you, and you know, you may have friends that want to do it, they want to say, I want to become a doctor. And you just stop there. You don't give any appreciation or time or due diligence to other fields. Um, but there are plenty of brilliantly smart people doing um, other industries because certain qualities are more prominent in other fields. For example, you may want to become a people person. You love working with people. You want to provide bedside care, interact with the patients. The doctor doesn't always do that. You know, um, I spend maybe a few hours with my patients today and the nurse who took care of them spent several more than I did because she sat right outside the room. Anything he needed, she took care of. Understand what you value and definitely explore the different careers so you can understand what those values are in the first place. And then one more last tip, guys, is to just make sure you're kind of engrossing yourself in the healthcare field. This includes things like just reading about it. You know, look at your New York Times articles, um, you know, daily news, see what healthcare related news shows up, see what medical news shows up. Do you enjoy it? Again, it goes back to the idea of, is this interesting? And can I see myself kind of reading about this on a regular? Because you will. Uh, doctors and being in the medical field is a lifelong, learning kind of career path. So if you can't you see yourself educating yourself on whatever you may be reading about, then it may not be the field for you. So keep yourself kind of in gross health news and media and cases are some great ways to get some exposure and also build your interest. And finally, guys, I want to close this video with a question. So if you're young, you're in your high school, you're watching this video, or maybe you're in college and you're considering going into medicine, I'm interested in making a series for you guys if you're interested. And it's literally going to be, you know, an MD or a doctor versus another healthcare profession. So maybe it'll be doctor versus nurse. And I can tell you the pros and cons of each, as well as get experts in each of those respective fields to kind of give me their insight. So if you're interested in a series like that, make sure you comment down below. If you enjoyed this video, make sure you also hit that like and subscribe button. But with that being said, guys, uh, we're going to end this video. Thank you so much for being a part of my journey. Hopefully I was a little help on yours. I'll see you guys in the next one. Take care, guys.